Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, No Flight Images, and uh, this short video, um, I'm going to answer some questions I've been asked about the Epson ET8850, well, 8550, get the number right, and printing on film. Uh, this is either for contact printing uh, or for just making transparencies that you can show. Now, I've got here um, a light box. It's an old light box that you used to use for transparencies. So it's quite bright and it doesn't come out necessarily that great on the video here. But I have got some shots that are cut in showing different, uh, different things I'm going to mention about printing. The film I'm using is a 160 micron film from Photospeed in the UK. Uh, it's A4 size, comes a box of this. Uh, it's quite thin, but it prints perfectly well via the rear feed here on the AE550. Don't try putting it in the, uh, in the tray at the front. The tray at the front is for plain paper, copying very thin photo paper. I would not put anything good through it like that. Works fine with paper. Definitely you don't want stuff going through, going through the rollers and coming back because it has a backwards, goes off that way, turns around, comes back out again. Doesn't always do paper as much good. Anyway, this film prints very well. And this is quite tricky to show. <laughs> this is a uh, print and you're seeing it obviously on a sheet of paper. And uh, this is a very wide gamut test image I have that's actually pro photo color space. And I've printed it using an Epson premium, um, premium gloss, lust, uh, premium luster profile that I've got that works pretty well. Uh, profiling stuff like this is quite different in many ways to profiling ordinary papers. Um, I have looked at this when I reviewed the new i1 Pro 3, with, uh, which does have a transparency and light box profiling option, but that's quite advanced stuff. Um, and most people I think are going to be doing printing on this printer are going to be printing black and white uh, and maybe using it for direct contact prints. Now this is my black and white test image. Um, let's say it's on the film and I've just put this piece of paper so you can actually see it a bit better. And I've printed this twice. Now I've printed it once using um, both using the ABW black and white print mode by the way. Uh, this one is just set to premium semi-gloss and prints perfectly well, looks fine and uh, it's quite tricky to show the details here and as I say I've got some photos that show the surface effects. Now this one is printed using the velvet fine art setting. What's the difference in them? Well, you know, superficially, this one looks more neutral. When you look more carefully, you can actually see that the pigment ink from this printer is being added to the mix, and that's making the blacks blacker. And in fact, if you look very carefully, and this is quite tricky to get the angle right, you can see from the reflection off the surface where the black matte black ink is being used. It's a uh, pigment black and it has a more matte look on here. Um, it's not the same as matte black in printers, pigment printers which have matte black photo black. It's a black that's mainly intended for use with plain paper, for text and things, but it is on some settings, in fact Velvet Fine Arts as well, uh, it is added to the mix in normal printing. Now that contributes to the interesting results, printing results I've had with normal papers on this printer, uh, which it's quite different being a bit of a hybrid between a dye-based printer and a pigment-based printer. And in fact, if you look very carefully at the reflection of what is the grey ramp on this test image of mine, which is downloadable from the Northlight site, you can see that the pigment black starts to come in around 65-70% black. So once you get blacker than 65-70% you're starting getting pigment black 
added to the mix. Now I can see that quite clearly looking at this if I get the light right because you can get a gloss differential on the surface. Now that doesn't matter if you're using this for contact printing because what's important is the amount of light going through the uh, uh, film to uh, whatever paper you're printing onto. And if I look at the one here, this is printed just, this is using the premium semi-gloss setting with the ABW mode. Now this one, there is no gloss differential. The entire surface is shiny. Uh, now, I don't have profiling equipment and I don't have a darkroom anymore, so I can't give you details about how to do use this for contact printing. But it's worth knowing that if you use the Velvet Fine Art setting, the VFA setting, that you will get matte black added to the mix and that will give you a greater density. Now, where I have noticed this is in printing some colour images. Now, I printed a few colour images just to see what they would be like for uh, transparencies. Now, I used to print, I uh, used to do transparencies years ago, um, haven't shot any for a long while. And uh, this, this light box is that ancient. Uh, interestingly enough, I was able to use uh, a normal paper profile for printing. Uh, this was the uh, Epson Premium Luster. Uh, it might be worthwhile experimenting to see which profiles give the best results on it. But once again, I looked at what happens if I use Velvet Fine Art, which is the setting which brings out the matte, uh, brings the pigment ink into the mix. Now, this here on the uh, light box is actually two transparencies on top of each other. One of the problems is if you try and print transparencies using normal print settings is that with a white paper with ink on top of it, what you're seeing is light that has gone through the ink, bounced off the paper and comes back through the ink. Now it's more complex than that actually, but effectively you're getting a double pass through. So it's no surprise that if you print out two of these transparencies and sandwich them together, you get a much better looking print. Well, that's fair enough, that depends. Even if you use just the die setting, so you're printing it as a glossy paper or a luster paper, or if you use the VFA setting, so the matte black is used. Now, you don't have to use the VFA profile. The profile I've used is one of the ones I created for the review of this, which uh, was for a Hannah Muller paper that with this particular printer gave me a gamut very similar to what I would expect of a normal luster photo paper. Much bigger than I'd expect of a fine art paper. So by using that profile, which is the VFA profile, I get a print that has used the matte black. Now this is the, and I can tell quite easily by just getting the light right, this is a print of an image and uh, this is done with checks to see. Yeah, I do write down the details when you're doing this sort of testing. This is premium luster profile, premium semi-gloss media setting. It looks reasonable like that. If I put it on light box, it looks okay, but the blacks are not that great. There's not re any real density to it. What I found out was that uh, if I used the Let's take one of these off. If I used the normal setting for the VFA setting, I got a very nice looking print, but it was just too light and the shadows were opened up too much. Now, by applying a Photoshop gamma correction, a simple curve that, uh, that dips the midtones and basically darkens the image a lot, I get a much darker image and there's the bright one from, and uh, I, I will have to cut the images in here to show you because you'll never see this on the video. There's the light one, and there's the after I've added the gamma curve. Now, it's still not as dark as I'd like, and the colours aren't quite as strong as I'd like. And it turns out, this is where I discovered that if you get two of the images, if you align them carefully, and you can align them pretty exactly, um, then you get the sort of intensity that I would have expected if I'd have taken this with slide film.
Um, that's a look in one of my images I've not seen for a good few years. Now, I will at some point look into more into uh, doing work on uh, film uh, for back projection, uh, for uh, use with light boxes, but that's quite advanced colour management and the kit to do it is relatively complex as well. But takeaways from this are that if you use the 8550 and you use the VFA profile, the VFA media setting, then you get pigment black added to the mix and that pigment black gives you added density and gives you a much better look to things. Now with this, uh, obviously light coming through it, the absolute best results I got here, the best looking result on this particular light box is just to take two prints and sandwich them on top of each other. Now, if you want to be really picky, there's the thickness of the film and well, there might be a little bit of loss of detail there. You could always reverse one of them, print it back to front and put uh, surface to surface so that the two inks are together and you get the double ink thickness. Um, don't try cranking the ink up just to try and get the density on here. You will get, you can get a bit of an improvement, but you're running very much towards the ink limits of what this media can take. So for black and white, you've got the option of being able to use the pigment black. And if anyone does experiment with this and uh, you find it's good for print, please do let me know. Um, and I will happily mention that with the main review on this because I have had quite a few questions about printing film. But the film is uh, photo speed, uh, di digital contact film, DC film, 160. So it's 160 microns thick. Um, comes in boxes of it as in A4 here. Now, hope that's of use. If you've got any questions, please do contact me either at Northlight or on the comments on YouTube. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you find it useful. Uh, if you've got suggestions for things you'd like to see covered in vid videos, can't yeah, guarantee I'll cover all of them, but please feel free to contact me at Northlight. Uh, let me know, because I'm always looking for ideas of stuff that's useful. Um, I've got stacks of kit. I've got stacks of uh, more spare time than I really would like at the moment. So uh, hope these are useful. Thank you.